Hello again, folks. Linda Stern here from the Stern Family Art Collection with another episode of Art with the Sterns. Today we have a very unusual painting to show you, and it concerns a very famous California artist named Granville Redmond. Granville Redmond, as you know from if you follow me on Facebook, was the subject of a wonderful retrospective that just closed at the Crocker Museum in Sacramento. It will be opening again in June 28th at the Laguna Art Museum, so follow their website to see when it will be opening considering current pandemic conditions but it should be there all summer and it's not to be missed. Today, John will tell you a little bit about uh, Granville Redmond who lived from 1871 to 1935. He had a very interesting life and overcame amazing odds to become one of California's most beloved artists even in his lifetime. Here's John Stern. Hello, and what Linda said about this exhibition is absolutely right, but the book is available. You can get it now, and it will be available for a long time. It's an absolutely wonderful book, which we'll look at uh, a little bit later. But the painting I want to share with you today is a miniature. As you know, we have several miniatures in our collection. Uh, there were paintings that, that I got really interested in because they were so small and they were so nice. So this one by Gran Granville Redmond measures three and a quarter inches by five and a half inches and it was painted in 1902. It's kind of a foggy landscape. Um, the painting was given to me by my good friend, the late DeWitt Clinton McCall. Uh, Dee and I would always exchange paintings as gifts and and if I found a nice little painting, we would sh I would give it to him. And, and he gave me this uh, back in 1985. But Redmond, as Linda said, uh, was born in Philadelphia in 1871. And when he was about uh, two and a half years old, he almost died of scarlet fever. He recovered, but it left him permanently deaf. So he could not hear. And at that age, if you cannot hear, you cannot learn to speak. So he did not speak his entire life. He was deaf and mute, but he got along just fine. And in 1874, uh, when he was only about three, the family came to California um, li to live in San Jose. And a few years later, when he was old enough, they placed him in the uh, School for the Deaf in, in Berkeley. It was an institution that, that taught, taught him um, sign language, uh, taught him reading and, and writing, also taught him painting. There were a lot of wonderful uh, deaf artists that, that taught at the institution. And in 1890, he enrolled in San Francisco at the California School of Design, which was the big art school in California. It was in San Francisco. And in 1893, he won a prize which allowed him to go to Paris for five years. And in Paris, he studied at the Académie Julian. And the other thing that's really interesting is that he entered a painting in the Paris Salon, a painting that he did in France, and it was accepted, which is really unusual for an American art student, let alone an American professional, but he was, he was simply an art student, and I'll show you that uh, a little later. In 1898, he moved um, to Los Angeles and um, opened a studio and he painted in Northern and Southern California for quite a few years. In um, 1910, he lived in San Mateo. And then in 1917, perhaps the, perhaps the best event of his life is he came permanently to live in Los Angeles. And he did that because he wanted to audition for the movies. And if you recall, in 1917, all movies were silent. So he thought, I'm silent and I can express myself. I learned pantomime at the School for the Deaf. 
So he auditions for Charlie Chaplin. Uh, Chaplin was a big filmmaker. He had a studio uh, in Los Angeles on La Brea Avenue. He auditions. They become very good friends. Uh, Charlie realizes that he's not such a good actor, but he is a very good painter. So he gives him a, a, a bungalow on his studio light, studio lot to use as his painting studio. But he does appear in seven of Chaplin's films. Uh, perhaps the most famous is a movie called The Kid. Um, Redman appears in the early part of the movie. He's the artist. Um, and then he also appears in a movie which you can get um, on CD. It's called A Dog's Life. And in that movie, um, Chaplin keeps trying to sneak a dog into the cafe. And um, Redman is the cafe owner, so he keeps throwing them out. It's a, it's a very good way to see Redman at work. It is a silent movie, but he was very expressive. And he continued in, in his career as a very successful artist, sold a lot of work to Hollywood people because of his connection with Charlie Chaplin. And he died in 1935 in Los Angeles. So this is a miniature. Miniatures are generally not painted unless they were presentations or gifts. So Redman uh, probably painted this as a gift. When um, D. McCall found it, there are actually two paintings. One is a slightly bigger one than this, and uh, D. restored it, uh, cleaned the frame, replaced the glass. This is the way it was actually uh, framed uh, from the beginning with this glass that's covering most of the frame. So this is uh, how I obtained uh, this charming little painting. Um, and the book, which, as I said, everybody should order, is um, one of the, it's, it is currently the best book available on Redmond, and it'll be that way for a long time. It's the definitive book of, of Redmond. And is written by Scott Shields, who's the um, associate director of the Crocker Museum. He's also the curator that organized the exhibition. And the exhibition is wonderful, full of paintings uh, from his very earliest period to um, the, the mid-30s when he died. And among uh, those paintings I want to share with you, I don't know if I can, if, oh, here it is. This is the painting that he painted in France and exhibited at the Salon. This is called Matin d'hiver, which means winter morning. And it was painted in 1895 and exhibited in 1895. So if you think of Grenville Redmond, uh, today you think of poppies and lupins. But this is a very early piece. He was studying in the French uh, Academie Julien, and they taught painting there in the, in the absolute ac academic manner. You had to learn to draw first, and then two years later, if you passed all your exams, they let you paint. And it was modeled on the River Seine. It's a foggy morning in winter, and there's a barge um, tied up on, on the bank of the river. So this is the one he had in the Paris Salon. And then the next painting I want to share with you is... Oops, not this one. It's hard to do this when you're up upside down looking from the back, but this painting. This is another um, early painting. It's a tonal painting, and, and tonal painting is, is a style that was very popular in Northern California. It's based on the French Barbizon style, and it is characterized by uh, very few colors, and mostly, mostly the earth tones, the browns, the golds, the olives, but there's lots of tones of those few colors. So it creates a soft, gentle, poetic painting. So this is tonalism, and that was what was popular in Northern California. And all the artists that lived in San Francisco painted this way. For one thing, the clientele, which were the rich people in San Francisco that made money in the gold rush as, as miners and merchants and bankers, they wanted things that were French. So this is what they favored. And, 
and um, this was very popular in San Francisco. The next painting I want to share with you is one of Southern California. This is a more colorful painting and it's more impressionist. There are a lot more colors here, some blues and, and reds and greens. And this is a view of Long Beach, the, the coast at Long Beach, uh, painted by uh, Redman. This painting is uh, currently in the Ray Redfern collection, the Redfern Gallery. So if you're interested, call Ray. Talk about the sky. And Oh, the sky, as you can see, is in broken color. And broken color is, is like a fancy term you can impress all your friends at a cocktail party. But all it means is that the colors are not mixed together. So traditionally, you mix your colors on your palette. If you want to make a soft baby blue, you put blue, a little white, a little gray, maybe a little pink. You mix it all up and you apply it as one color. That's called palette mixing. Broken color is when you keep those colors separate. You put them in, in this case, in the sky with you know, it's more grays and then it's some blues and then just a few reds. And, and it does mix and it does make the baby blue, but it does it in the viewer's eye. And that movement, that motion made by all these different little bits of color help create the sense of, of brilliance. Uh, it looks much brighter when it's done this way. And then finally, there's so many paintings in this book. This, as I said, this is the definitive book on Redmond, and it's based on, on the research of Mildred Albranda, the late Mildred Albranda, who was a teacher for the deaf. Um, I knew her um, years ago, and she helped me a lot with the research for the Redmonds that we had at Peterson Galleries at the time. This was in the 1980s. And she passed on, but her research um, stayed in the family, and her son Eric made it available uh, to the, the museum. This, of course, is perhaps the most viewed and the most famous uh, of Redmond's paintings. It is Poppies and Lupins in Southern California. And if you remember, this is the, the painting that you first saw if you came into the Irvine Museum. This was hanging on the wall at the old Irvine Museum. It never came down. Actually, it came down once when we had the tour that went to Paris and Spain and Krakow. And we had people that were upset because they brought in families and friends to see this painting. It's a large painting, 32 inches up by 80 inches, 80, 80 inches across. And it is currently in this particular exhibit up in Sacramento. So it ended. See. Oh, it, I'm so. sorry. Linda reminds me it's ended. But it will, um, if all things work out, it will be displayed at the Laguna Art Museum. Well, do you have any interesting stories about Granville Redmond, any personal I, takes that you'd like to share with people? Actually, I, I do. Um, I did not know Redmond, of course. Uh, he was born about 10 years after he died. But while I was the director of Peterson Galleries in Beverly Hills, uh, we were one of the first galleries to handle California Impressionism. And one time, uh, an elderly gentleman came in and looked at our Redmonds and then he started talking to me. He said, you know, when I was a child, this gentleman, I accompanied, on one occasion, I accompanied my father to Redmond's studio. And this was the one at the Charlie Chaplin movie lot, which is on, on La Brea. And he said that he stood there while his father and Redmond negotiated on the price of the painting that the father eventually bought. And he said the negotiations were done strictly by writing notes to each other. So they looked at the painting, they liked it, um, started exchanging notes with the artist, with Redmond, and eventually struck a deal. So this is the way he was uh, most of his life. He carried with him a pad, a paper, and a pen. And if you look at some of the pictures of Redmond, you see that he's holding that um, because he's usually photographed, like one photograph, he's talking to Charlie Chaplin. This is while they were filming the movie A Dog's Life. And Chaplin is making the, the sign for the letter D, this American Sign Language, 
and Redmond is holding in his hand a pad of paper and, and a pen. He was such an interesting artist, and I think something when people look here at the cover of the book, which is a classic Poppies and Lupins painting of Redmond from his Impressionist period, and then see your early small miniature, which was a tonal painting, that he was one of the few of the great California artists that was a master of both techniques, both a tonalist and an impressionist. And both paintings of his are valuable and very sought after today. Exactly. They're beautiful paintings, whether they're the earlier tonal style or the later impressionist style. Um, very, very fine artists. And um, some of the most beautiful paintings in this style I've seen have uh, been by Grenville Redmond. Well, I hope that our viewers will take the opportunity, if they live in our area, to go to the Laguna Museum after June 28th. And I hope they can get in and see the show because it is magnificent. And if you're not in our area, um, think about purchasing this book if you're an artist or an art lover, because it is wonderful. Kudos to Scott Shields for such a wonderful um, publication. I'm sure you can either get it through the Crocker Museum store, uh, probably will be available at the Laguna Art Museum store, and I'm sure it's available on uh, Amazon as well. It's called Granville Redmond, The Eloquent Palette. So well, that- As um, you're speaking, there is a wonderful lecture by Scott on hmm. the internet, so tell us about that, Linda. Well, I did put that up on my Facebook page, and um, so you can look for it there, but it is, um, the Crocker Museum, if you go on YouTube and search Scott Shields, Granville Redmond at the Crocker Museum, there's an hour-long lecture that tells you about his entire life and shows um, a, a great many paintings from this wonderful show. So I urge all of our um, viewers to take that in. So... Um, that's it for today. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Art with the Stearns, and I hope you'll be back with us again. And as things start opening up, really hopeful that you'll be able to go to art galleries again and museums and enjoy uh, beautiful things. So thank you very much. Thanks again. See you next time. Bye-bye.